Hi, I'm Adam Mahood. I'm here to show you what's new for SQL Server and Windows Azure SQL Database developers in Visual Studio 2013. Almost every modern application leverages and interacts with the database in one form or another. With Visual Studio 2013, database developers can target SQL Server or Windows Azure SQL Database and have an experience modeled after application development, including full integration into the application development lifecycle. This provides a consistent, cohesive experience for application developers and database professionals alike, and the most comprehensive, up-to-date tooling support for Windows Azure SQL Database as you move your application to the cloud. The full set of database development tools is available out of the box in Visual Studio 2013 and will be kept up to date via Visual Studio updates. We've significantly improved the capabilities available at your fingertips when working with a direct connection to the database. This includes T-SQL query execution, schema and data comparison, and a buffered declarative editing experience. With project-based development, you get the benefits of integrating database development into your application development lifecycle. This includes integrating into your existing scheme of application lifecycle management tools that you and your team currently use. Also, a local debug database combined with rich first-class T-SQL features provide an isolated sandbox development environment that's particularly powerful when developing for Windows Azure SQL Database. All of the database development tools in Visual Studio 2013 use standard formats and artifacts that are compatible with other SQL Server client tools like SQL Server Management Studio, the Windows Azure Management Portals. All of this is made possible by one unified framework called the DAC framework. We're going to take a look at key experiences in each of these three main buckets and look at where they light up in Visual Studio 2013. So here I am in Visual Studio 2013. I'm going to open up SQL Server Object Explorer. This tool window is really your hub for all your database development activities inside Visual Studio. I can add direct connections to on-premise SQL Server and Windows Azure SQL databases. And I have a couple existing connections here, one to an on-premise SQL Server, to a Windows Azure SQL database instance, and also a local DB instance, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, I can expand this on-premise instance, expand the databases. Here I have my cardealer.com database. Can navigate down through my tables and views as we reverse engineer a database model. Off of each object, I can do things like view code, view the data in this table, launch the table designer. And off of the database, I can do various DAC pack verbs like publish or extract a DAC pack or launch a schema or data comparison. I can also launch just a plain old T-SQL query in the query editor and begin to develop away. However, I want to take advantage of the benefits I get with project-based development and create a SQL Server database project from this database. I can do that by right-clicking on the database, clicking Create New Project. Give this guy a name here. I'll take the default settings. You can customize uh, the project creation a little bit, but we'll use the defaults for now. So I'm going to click Start, and what we're doing is taking that live database and turning it into a T-SQL source code representation in a SQL Server database project. And it's the one database project type available in Visual Studio 2013. So if I now pop over here to Solution Explorer, you'll see I have the full definition of my schema, but this time, all of my objects are in individual T-SQL files. So the first thing I want to do is create a baseline of this database schema. So I can come up to the project, snapshot the project, and what this is going to do is build and create a single file representation of the schema, or a DAC pack. I'm going to call this baseline. And down the road, what I can use this for is uh, comparing my change database or my modified database schema to this original version to make sure that the changes are as I expected. The ultimate goal here is to deploy this database out to Windows Azure SQL Database. The first step to do that is to change the target platform of the project to SQL Database. And what this does is allows you to get platform-specific validation over the schema model in your database project. So I'm going to save this property over here. And if I, if I build this project, I'll get platform-specific validation uh, over the requirements of SQL, Windows Azure SQL Database over my project. And you can see I already have one error. It looks like my value table doesn't have a clustered index, which is a requirement for deploying a database to SQL Azure. So just like in any old application, I can double click on an error in the error list, and I'm brought into the offending not code snippet this time, but T-SQL snippet. I can quickly add a primary key here to get rid of this error. See, the error goes away. 
And while I'm here, I can right-click on the value identifier, and you see I have some rich first-class T-SQL features, or language features, um, available in my script editing, like refactor rename, expand all wildcards, and go to, go to definition and find all references, some of the key paradigms you're used to in your application development. So I'm going to go ahead and rebuild. Looks like we're all clean. So what I want to do now is take advantage of this local debug database workflow. To do that, I use the exact same paradigm in Visual Studio that I would for a normal application. Start debugging. This is going to deploy my database project out to LocalDB, which is your uh, local isolated sandbox debug database that is spun up by default for each project in your solution. So if I go back to SQL Server Object Explorer, you'll see I have this LocalDB projects node, which again is this default debug database instance. If I expand the databases, there's my cardealer.com project database. Expand the tables and the views. If I right click on the value table, view code, and it's the exact same representation of the table that was in my project. So I'm pretty confident now that I'm set up for success to deploy to Windows Azure SQL database. There are a couple different ways that I could actually publish this project out. I could use schema comparison to do a targeted comparison and script change. I could take this DAC pack, create a new DAC pack, and deploy it via a variety of client tools. Or I could just do a direct project publishing, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to right click on this project, click publish, enter in my connection information. credentials, and we're going to call this cardealer.com Azure. And there are a lot of different ways, a lot of different knobs that we give you uh, to tune the database publishing experience and deployment experience, but we're going to use the defaults which are conservative and set you up for success when targeting Azure. I'm going to go ahead and publish this. And we're popped into the Data Tools Operations window, which is your home for tracking long-running database operations in Visual Studio. You can see this publish operation. I can see every step of the way, including the publish preview, the different scripts that it executed, and the results of executing those scripts. It looks like my publish completed successfully, which is great. There are a couple different ways, just like everything else that we've been doing, that I could verify that my database made it out to Azure successfully. But I want to highlight one of the new experiences we've lit up in Visual Studio 2013, hanging off Server Explorer. So if I go to View, over to Server Explorer, you'll see this Windows Azure node. And this node in Server Explorer is really a launch point for navigating uh, and enumerating all of your assets under a Windows Azure subscription, really tying a hybrid experience between your local development environment and your Windows Azure assets. I've already tied this up to my subscription, which takes only a few simple clicks. If I expand this node, you can see I have several assets, including the SQL Databases node. I'm going to go ahead and expand this. I'm just going to go ahead and retrieve all the different databases under my subscription. And I should see this cardealer.com Azure database appear. There we go. And off of this node, I can do a couple different things. I can launch Windows Azure Management Portal if I want to do some additional management tasks. Or I could open in back in SQL Server Object Explorer to continue my development and further tweak. If I do that, you see I'm launched back over into the same window that we were looking at before. I'm going to refresh. I have that same database. And all of my tables and views should be right there with it. Visual Studio 2013 provides a comprehensive set of database tooling for both application developers and database professionals alike. Whether you're developing an on-premise application targeting SQL Server or developing for the cloud with Windows Azure SQL Database, the SQL Database tools in Visual Studio 2013 will increase the productivity and efficiency of your application development process.